Frozen's a story about a, a young woman, Anna, who sets out to save her kingdom from an eternal winter that happens to be caused by her sister. And along the way, she <laughs> meets some pretty interesting people and snow people uh, to help her. That's great. Um, how big of a role uh, does the importance of family play in the film? And, and what did you bring to that personally? Mm -hmm. uh, the main theme of Frozen is about fear versus love, sort of the power of love over fear. Right. And it's a very important theme to us, and there's no greater way to tell that story, we think, through the love of family. Um, we have romantic love in the film, of course, but we wanted to push it and sit, look at a different kind of love uh, that resonates with everyone, whether you're, you know, have brothers or sisters, and, and um, so, yeah. <laughs> is that, yeah? That's good. <laughs> um, and, and this one's really sort of for both of you. Um, they're calling the film an epic comedy adventure. Can you speak first to what makes it funny? There's a lot of humor in the movie from many of the characters. Uh, in fact, our protagonist, Anna, uh, she's a very fun, lively, funny character. But what I love is that it always comes from who they are or the situations we put them in. So it feels very genuine and relatable humor. And then what makes it an epic adventure? Well, I think, I mean, the scope of the setting of the Arendelle and the deep fjords and the giant mountains um, landscape that they're struggling in, I think, uh, is epic to begin with. But the themes themselves are quite big. I mean, fear versus love are giant concepts, and these characters all hang on that theme in some way. Some exploit love, some exploit fear and in doing that you put them through a heck of a lot. <laughs> so. We always talk about the environment being a character and you can mm -hmm. see that in the movie. There's a lot of scope and scale and a lot mm -hmm. of uh, technology was used at the studio to actually allow the characters to interact with the environment, interact with the snow. Uh, we didn't just want the characters walking on top of the snow, we wanted it to feel real and feel like they were actually interacting with the environment. Well, that leads into what were some of the unique challenges of making a film like this with the snowy environment and mm -hmm. with the dramatic scenery? Well, it's very hard to do, um, obviously, to do snow. I, our first early tests, we had, they looked a little like packing peanuts, and we're, we're having them, um, we needed, but we needed, you know, powdery snow and compact snow, not to mention ice, and ice that looks like real ice and mm. not glass, and, and can hold a lot of color, and then you're throwing a blizzard on top of that. So our effects team was pushed to the limits. They had to create brand new software and keep reworking it and reworking it, and um, we're really proud of what they've done. They did their research, too. We sent the animators and effects artists to Cheyenne, Wyoming to walk through waist-deep snow. Uh, mm -hmm. We sent our art direction team up to an ice hotel in Canada to see how light reflects and refracts uh, with the elements, and, and uh, we didn't want ice to simply be a reflective surface because right. there's actually depth to it, so all of those things required a, a, a real coordination between our software engineers and our artists to to, um, come up with the tools that allowed them to do that. One of the best collaborations we had was working with Kristen Bell. Um, Anna is Anna in a large part because of her. Um, we wanted to do a girl who was feisty and different and very, very relatable. Um, and Kristen really wanted to push that and, and, and to, to do a Disney heroine that is a lot like her and us, the, some of us who weren't so graceful and who maybe talked too fast and, and um, and we loved that. And the thing that she didn't realize uh, we were going to go crazy about and, and want so much is she's very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristen is wonderfully funny, and now and Anna's funny because of her. And so we, we really, that was really grateful to have worked with her. People may not realize, but we work with the actors over a fairly long period of time, and they come in several times, I mean many times. Mm -hmm. And they actually, what we love about this cast is they were all willing to work with us, to improvise mm -hmm. in the room, uh, to really find the character voices, and then it made it easier for Jen as writer to mm -hmm. start uh, writing for them. It was a really collaborative uh, process. Yeah, when we brought Josh Gad in for the first time, we had a rough scene. And then we did it a few times, and we said, can we just play? And he likes to play, thank God. So we just we worked with him, and we, we threw all these different ideas at him. And that session is actually 
in the film uh, when you meet Olaf. So that's the original, you know, meeting Olaf mm -hmm. in that room. Now you're meeting him in the yeah, film. Yeah, I don't exactly think we ever was. went back on we that. We didn't. Uh, it was mm -hmm. great. That's actually a great story. Um, um, so that's a great segue, too. Um, speaking of Josh and Olaf, tell us a little bit about this character, Olaf. Sure. Olaf uh, was uh, uh, originated as this little snowman built by Anna and Elsa when they were little girls. Um, and he wasn't magical then. It was just they hand-built him. But it was uh, the time they were probably happiest, right before things uh, got darker and, and harder for them. And so when Elsa is uh, older and, and starting to be free again with her power, she creates this little Olaf. And he, he's imbued with that childlike innocence that they had. And it makes for what I love is the state the obvious comedy of kids, <laughs> you know, that he tends to do. So. What I love, too, is he's an innocent character, has an innocent view of the world, but he also brings a lot of heart to, uh, to the movie. I think because he has that innocent view, he can say things that other characters can't that's really poignant and, and go right to the emotion. Right. Um, how does the music complement the story? It's the music that so, mm. feels so important in the film. How does it complement well, we wanted, the story? We wanted to do a, a, you know, a real big film with songs and, and, and give you a sense of some of that classic Disney that we all love. But we also want to do something very fresh and contemporary. And Bobby and Kristen want to do that too. And they're the perfect partners. And through our characters that we wanted to make more relatable and very kind of gettable by the modern audience, they wanted to do that with the songs. So we feel like we really pushed you know, to a different place with the music. And the other most important thing I think we wanted was that the songs tell the story as well. So that you just, they feel very organic and you just kind of realize, oh, I'm in a song. And not that you're stopping for a show song or something. What I love is songs can bring humor, but it can also really touch the soul in a mm -hmm. way that uh, dialogue can't always get across. And so mm -hmm. it really helps elevate and propel the movie. Do you have a favorite moment in the film for both of you? <laughs> and, it, and why? You know, it's difficult because we say it's like every scene's your baby. Um, I will say that the this, the sequence, though, when um, towards the end in the third act, when they're all in the fjord in the blizzard, that how that sequence came together and what it means, and that we did a climax with four characters and and in a, a, a snowstorm, and it feels the way it does. Uh, I'm really proud of it, and it and you know we were asked to push to that really special ending when everyone heard it first by Chris Buck. He, he suggested an end, yeah. it's a very special end, and we all as a studio were committed to it, and to earn it, um, that scene made us feel like we, we did it, and so I, I think that's the one for me. There's a lot of great moments in the film, but what I think uh, I'm proudest of is that all those individual moments add up to something greater, um, and so the film feels really big and special, and uh, I love it. That's great, and and then um, obviously there's a lot in the film for girls, but but there's a lot in the film for boys too. Why will boys love the movie? You know, I think I, I think boys will love the movie not just because I mean there's a lot of comedy and adventure, and I mean we're talking some pretty uh, uh, big obstacles they're faced with, and and there's some fearless ways they get out of it. Um, Anna and Kristoff are kind of hilarious together as they try to, but also what's amazing is um, you know. Uh, the character, the story, um, a lot of you know boys and girls alike have related to it just because it 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 hits home when you have siblings of any kind, or if you're at, you know ever feeling like you just you, you don't want to give up on something and you want to push through and and hopefully it gives you the inspiration to do it. So we've been very happy. And with And all how the it characters, resonates. male and female, yeah. are very adventurous in this movie. Yeah, and it, it is a big epic adventure, and there's a lot of obstacles and. There's some scary parts to the movie. There's some funny parts to the movie. It's, uh, I think it's, we, boys will love it.